Hello everyone and welcome to a new Let's Play series and this series will be about a game called El Guru. And yeah, it's a physics simulation, a two-dimensional physics simulation. And I discovered this game actually uh, quite a long time ago and it's just super awesome, super innovative, just like Minecraft, pretty much in 2D but uh, on the other hand with way more functions. So let's get right into it. The point is, um, we can this tool just and this program just make any objects for example a circle and first of all you can just move them around uh, looks pretty ordinary but there are so many options which uh, makes uh, it possible to build gigantic uh, yeah, machines and whatnot everything in two dimensions but uh, yeah it's just uh, it's not limited to block wise like minecraft for example i can cut the circle off in half here and it will actually start uh, falling apart um, it can also freeze the scene, scene by the way and um, you just do this with a spacebar, collect this up, select it and so on. So let's just, for example, I can draw a circle here. I already uh, set up something uh, over there. Let's say two circles, very roughly. And well, this uh, third one wasn't intended. Uh, now we simply go and uh, create another square here. Um, I'm just putting them to the foreground because I can now add the center axles to them. You can also do this X uh, thing with this and what it does, it creates uh, axes. Yep, so you can see, ta-da, this one is now fixated to the background. Okay, and this car here, um, well, well <laughs> is not really fancy. Of course, you can uh, get very fancy with this, but let's just uh, do something very special with this. And that's the cool part of it. You can create games with this game, pretty much. Because I can just, uh, for example, enter steer inputs for this uh, uh, yeah, for this X here and give it a motor speed and let's just make apply a very small torque and let's see what happens. So, can press forward and as you can see, uh, okay, this is a pretty weak axle. Axel, you will always have to be careful about because you can change everything in this game. So, let's say I can increase this torque here a little bit. Um, you can also, for the tire, there are a lot of options, I will go through them all uh, later on. Set, for example, uh, the restitution, which means the bounciness pretty much. So if I lower this, it uh, will bounce, bounce if the complete car uh, falls onto the ground. If it's higher, it will bounce like a, a rubber ball, whatever. Um, yeah, and if you lower the friction, it will actually do a wheel spin probably. So let's just try it out. Yep, so we are already at the part where we can do wheel spins here. And I can also fixate the camera. Um, to this, follow, so that I don't have to follow, yeah, so it's just, uh, okay, uh, this rough car here, we can also break, whoa, 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 but it is really slippery, whoa. so let's just try to, woohoo, well, uh, yeah, you get, uh, this is pr pretty much like these online browser games, no, but the tire has a little bit few friction, um, yeah, so my goal with this game here, and I can also, for example, in this case, it makes sense to remove the collision layer for this one, so that I can actually, as you can see here, I'm now, well, you can't see properly, but yeah, you can see this is behind it, because it won't collide with the ground anymore. Um, my goal was just to show you some cool examples of what to do here and what to build within this game, just some random loose scenes, pretty much like Minecraft creations. But uh, yeah, this is just something alternative, and I like the game a lot. So like, let's make the jump here. Whoa! And it also, yeah, the f physics simulation is pretty epic because you can, for example, see I can apply torque to the whole car by just wheel spinning the car, and therefore they, now it spins right. If I'm now uh, to keep the other one, it starts spinning left. Bam! And we are back at the top. Cause you can also zoom out and um, yeah, do lots of stuff. So. Yeah, maybe let me just quickly show you one of the scenes I already started. Okay, load. Uh, we don't need to save this. My scenes. Motor with air brake. So, um, this is a little bit complicated, but yeah, it also shows what cool stuff you can do with this. Um, so, let, let me actually stop this first, one sec. Okay, so here is the scene. It's currently actually uh, paused, now it's running, and you can see over there there's a graph. This graph, let me clear it again, 
Um, what it does is it shows the angular velocity of this uh, rotation, uh, rotatable uh, circle here. And if you take a closer look, currently the scene is running, and let me just make this a little bit smaller. So there are these, um, yeah, pretty much um, rectangles, which are mounted onto the square here, and they have just two holding lines here, and um, there's also another one in the back here, so that they won't go completely to the center. You see there's pretty much a cylinder um, around them, just a two-dimensional one. And they have a high air friction, and this spring here is attached to the uh, box in the background. And as you can see, it's well, it will follow the circle. But there's something special about this uh, spring here, and that's uh, I can for a spring set the this, uh, length. It uh, tries the target length, so that's the length uh, it will try to. Um, yeah, expand or retract to uh, when there is no other force applied or whatever. And the constant is the pretty much the strength uh, of the spring. But the damping, yeah, usually you can uh, have a damping of uh, um, a spring with a high damping will just yeah do what the damping does. But I can also apply a negative value to this. And what it does is that it's actually a perpetual mobi uh, mobile or I don't know how to pronounce this in English, but a car which prepared to its uh, forever. And yeah, usually what would happen is is that the spring doesn't decrease the velocity uh, due to friction pretty much, but it adds velocity when it's negative. Um, I can show you this uh, well, very simply when I put up another one. Um, so let's just quickly freeze this scene here. Um, I'll add a circle in the middle. Uh, let's see. Add a center axle. Just add another one and do the same for this one. Damping minus 0 0.1. So, and now we can also show plot and do the angular velocity. Oh, well, I first want to get rid of the other one. So, once again, show plot. Angular velocity. And go. So, what you can see is, uh, well, you don't see anything moving, but you have to uh, take a look at the scale here. It's just moving very slightly, and what you see is an exponential growth. You can also now see it already. It uh, just starts to swing more and more and more, and what happens now is that it exponentially goes quicker till it actually hits hits the ground here, and that's what it, what you can see because the the X can't just handle this anymore because it's too quickly. The X in the middle, and yeah, uh, it goes. Freaky. If I'm well, I could just move this whole thing here a little bit, and sh then it would go as fast really out completely because there's yeah, bam, bah, whatever. So the problem is that there is nothing to stop this thing from going quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. But I just wanted to try out, and that's what this scene here does: is to build a motor. So like something which uh, automatically starts once you give it a little push but it doesn't go infinitely fast um, yeah and this is what I created here so let's also show the plot for this one and yes first show it in action and I will quickly explain what I did here okay angular velocity okay uh, and I'm also smoothing this a little bit because yeah it's otherwise spazzing out a little bit um, so I can with this is pretty much a starter motor here. I can just apply a little bit of uh, torque here and well, it will slow down again. But once I reach a certain speed, I think it's around five uh, radians per second. Unfortunately, this uh, is, you can't change the units in which it's playing it. It's suddenly going faster and then it reaches a terminal velocity. So it doesn't go infinitely fast. I can also actually with the starting motor try to push it far, uh, faster goes a little bit faster but once I release this it goes back to this speed here. You can also slow it down a little bit and it will always stay at this speed here. So this is pretty much uh, how um, uh, a speed at which it is uh, yeah, neither going quicker or slower so it's a stationary uh, velocity. And there's another one at uh, speed zero. So yeah, so now to the point where this would be useful. For example I could just do this to simulate a car and build it into a complete car where you can yeah and the other one is still spazzing around there. Let me quickly stop this one. 
Um, yeah, where you have to maintain the motor speed, otherwise it will stall and you're, you failed your mission. Um, okay, and what it what happens here is that those uh, yeah the, the bar whatever. Um, so you saw those ones are retracting here. What I did is I increased the with the script menu you can do this, but it actually is not necessary. I increased the air friction multiplier for this just to get it uh, uh, to get the uh, terminal velocity at a, at a desired uh, value, but you could also do this with standard one. And so the air friction is what stops this uh, spring here from going too quickly. But um, since the spring, uh, well, the acceleration due to the spring is goes with the square of the velocity. So if it's twice as fast, the acceleration is four times faster. Same is with the uh, air friction. So I if the air friction is greater than the um, the damping coefficient, uh, or the, let's say the negative damp damping coefficient of the spring, it will always slow down, no matter what the speed is. And if it's lower, it will always increase, no matter what the speed is, because both go up with the square of the speed. Uh, but uh, what I can do is is add these springs here, because at a certain speed, the centrifugal force of the blocks here will just be higher than the spring force and they will actually go out a little bit and increase the friction by more than the square of the speed because suddenly the, the diameter of this complete thing here increases and that's what creates a terminal velocity so uh, you can see well and I will go to this part here at a, in a moment that now it goes quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and now you can actually see that those uh, squares go out a little bit and as soon as they go out the curve here pretty much slows down maybe I can show this again so I'm stopping it. You can always watch if you see this bar if the simulation is actually running or not. So um, it's pretty much is yeah pretty constant here, and now it raises and yeah, you can see it's it's slowing down. It's pretty cool, and um, yeah, I can also slow down it uh, by yeah pushing the motor in the other direction. And now the question is why is this? Uh, what why did I add this? Yeah brake pad here and what it does is actually very simple it keeps the motor from always starting over again because I also need a linear term otherwise it will always move at least a little bit I can demonstrate this very quickly for example increasing the target length and yeah so this thing will start moving and actually go quicker and quicker and it will pretty much always yeah, move up to the terminal velocity again. But I want also the motor to be able to stall. And that's why I created this linear force. So this is what pretty much creates two stationary points of the uh, speed of this, uh, let's see, it was at 0 0.2 something, uh, of this wheel here. I can also just increase the spring constant, of course. If I go a little bit higher, you will see, oh, let's do this that it actually doesn't influence the terminal velocity too much if it's even if it's at zero doesn't go a little bit doesn't go much faster because the average just increases uh, but once it is too high it is always higher than the power of the uh, 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 spring and will just stall Ta -da! Bam. yeah whatever so this was pretty much let's say this is the uh, first episode of what I wanted to show you and you can give me feedbacks uh, on what I should try. Maybe you can also try a already pre-built scene. There is a forums and uh, a, a page where you can upload and download scenes. And there are tons of freaking amazing buildings there. This was a very technical thing here. But as I'm a physics student, I just wanted to teach you a little bit maybe here. <laughs> don't know. Uh, and give you an example of what you can do here. For example, we could try next time building uh, yeah, um, let's, uh, an, an automatic uh, shotgun or whatever. This is pretty simple to do, and we can just uh, blast off some buildings there. That's maybe a cool idea. And um, yeah, first I need some feedback. So um, see you again in the next episode. Bye.